Good morning, mushrooms, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers, sisters, mothers, misters, and to all my cousins out there around the world, it's time to plug in and get this train chugging. Off to the races we go. Good morning, Zdenyak. Trump takes his COVID misinformation machine back on the road. And of course, here we've got the prefix miss. That means badly or incorrectly. And so he's providing bad or incorrect information and it's part of his big machine. It's just a nice sort of figurative way of explaining what he's doing, but they are back on the road. He claims that he no longer has COVID, and so they are out campaigning, and, uh, well, let's learn more in the caption below. Trump plans to hold his first rally since his virus diagnosis was, since his diagnosis was publicly disclosed, and he's holding that, he's going to hold that rally in Florida, risking another super spreader event. Ta -da! And not necessarily just from him, but from all the people who will come together, practice no social distancing, and probably not use any protective equipment. To disclose something, it means to make public information which was previously secret, well, undisclosed, we could say. Since his diagnosis went public, since they admitted to the public or let the public know, revealed, unveiled, and uh, formally let us know that he has COVID. So since it was publicly disclosed, now he's going to go back on the road. Let's move on. Jake Tapper, the newsman from CNN, says history will not be kind to those people who are enabling Trump. Nice reduced relative clause there or who have enabled Trump to enable somebody means to make them able to do something, to give them the ability. And so they're either approving his decisions, they're voting him into office, they're supporting the positions that he takes. That is an enabler. We hear this, uh, or we see this term as well, often with people who are trying to, who are battling with addiction or trying to overcome addiction and the people who provide them with money or drugs or whatever it may be, those are the enablers who enable them to continue the negative path of their life or in this case, nation. All right, Hillary Clinton's loss is lingering over Biden's head. To linger we've had on the show before and that means to kind of hang around longer than wanted or expected. Much like when you have a party and at the end of the night there's those last one or two guests that you just can't seem to get rid of. Uh, they just linger around longer than you wanted or expected. In that case, put them to work. Have them help you clean your house. However, Hillary's loss is lingering over Biden's head because she also had been leading in the polls running up to the election, much like Biden is now, however, and despite having won the popular vote, lost the presidency, as we are reminded of every single day. So there are fears that with such a large margin, let's move on. All right, this is the only swing state where Trump is polling ahead, where he's actually leading Biden in the polls. Um, I just highlighted this because you hear it all the time, a swing state. Those are the states that are not clearly, re historically, Republican or Democrat. And so it's kind of that purple you'll see on maps and it could go either way. It's not clear which way the state will vote as a whole. Let's move on. Huh? Fauci says he was taken out of context. Ooh, a nice past simple passive there. To be taken out of context in the new Trump campaign touting Trump's coronavirus response. Apparently they used Dr. Fauci's words in the advertisement, which he also did not give them approval to do, and they were using that to boost or to, to promote Trump's coronavirus response. And so if we're touting something, we're aggressively promoting it, usually in an effort to sell it, but in this case we're selling a candidate, not obviously financially, however he is selling our country to sell the idea uh, that his coronavirus response has been efficient and effective which we can all see has not. Let's move on. Becoming Jacinda Ardern, the small town takeout store worker who won over New Zealand and the world. The prime minister of New Zealand, she used to work in a small town takeout store where people would go and um, buy things and then take them out. 
Ta-da. Many people didn't know who she was and questioned her fitness for office. Whether she was experienced or capable enough to perform the duties of Prime Minister. However, over time, through her words and through her accent, actions, she won over New Zealand and she has also won over the world. Now people, at first they're a little bit skeptical, but she's got them firmly on her side now. To win somebody over is to persuade them to join you on your team or your side um, <clears throat> in basically anything through your words or actions. Often it's not your words, but your actions because actions speak louder than words, right? Cool. I don't know, she just seems a very, for once, a uh, very, very human and just uh, a very rational, reasonable individual who has uh, provided fairly solid leadership during this time of crisis. Yes, not perfect, but you know, leaders have to make tough decisions, which will bother some people. You can't make all the people happy all the time. Malaysia detains Chinese vessels. We have detained on the show quite a bit, and oh, look at that, it's down here too to detain these Chinese vessels. These are ships, right? And so if they're detaining something, they're basically holding them in custody. Now, you can't actually put <laughs> a ship in custody. You can't put it in jail. However, they can force it go in to go into harbor and stay there or at least just um, anchor and park in one place and keep it there until whatever the situation is is resolved. I don't know, I've not actually read the article. Fill me in if you do, because as we know, I like to know. Let's move on. Has been indicted, nice reduced, present perfect passive, indicted by whom? By a grand jury, by a judge, we don't know, but that's what gave the official thumbs up for the charges to be filed against them and the case to move forward. Let's move on. On to our next detain. Canada's ambassador granted virtual consular access to detained Canadians. Yes, they got to speak with their um, consulate and or maybe even their ambassador. And with detained, we think of it as kind of like a holdup, um, just like a small delay in things. Well, you are in sort of custody. You're being detained by the police, by the government, by officials, etc. They have been detained since 2018. And so that's not just like a little pause while we check your documents or something like that. <clears throat> it sounds like they're basically in prison for the most part. Now, they may have been up to no good. They may have been doing something wrong. I have not read the article. Maybe they are bad, bad guys. I don't know. Read the article. Let me know. Well, at least they were able to talk to their consulate and hopefully try and get some sort of arrangement to return them back to their home country of Canada. All right. Let's move on. <clears throat> We've got a record smashing T-Rex skeleton. It sold for $31.8 million in an online auction, apparently. And uh, yes, as you know from the show, we set records and then we break records. Well, this didn't just break a record, it did it in a dramatic way, smashing it much like a window with a hammer or if you throw a glass onto the ground, it shatters into a million pieces. That's why you could also say record shattering. Ta-da! On to something that turns up in the news almost annually, but cheese rolling and other curious pastimes of the English. Yes, pastimes are little hobbies, things that you do to pass the time. <laughs> oh, wow, English is tough. Sometimes it is, I know, but some things are uh, kind of fairly obvious. Uh, or at least you can make an educated guess. It's safe to make assumptions from time to time. However, I'm curious about cheese rolling, and therefore it, cheese rolling, is a curious pastime. So not only is it the sort of feeling that we experience when we want to know more about something, but we can apply the same adjective to that something if it sparks that curiosity in other people that then want to know about it. Let's move on. The secret of Birkenstock's enduring success, and I just highlighted this because it's been on the show and it keeps popping up in the sort of culture, human interest section on CNN. And um, the enduring headline here about Birkenstock's enduring success. If something is enduring, it means it lasts over time, on and on. Think about it durable, like a good pair of boots or a good pair of jeans. It lasts for years and you're able to keep using it. 
Well, the Birkenstocks have been popular since, what, the 60s or something? I don't know. They're always associated with the hippies. All right, let's move on. Donald Trump's troubling vital signs. If you're walking down the street, tra-la-la-la-la, and you see a person unconscious lying on the street, the first thing you would do is check their pulse and check their <sighs> breathing. And so those are your vital signs to see if you are still alive. Um, because yes, a heartbeat and breathing are vital to your survival. <laughs> All right. But um, yes, often we use vital signs talking about the economy and so on with the health of the stock market and or bonds, the price of gold, etc. There are all sorts of different vital signs uh, that can be used and checked to apply to companies, the greater economy, human individuals, etc. That's it. Moving on. Trump's train is running off the tracks. How many times have we had this? It's like a train wreck. It's been derailed. Yes, it's off the tracks. It's just a nice visual metaphor, meaning that things aren't going according to plan because a train likes to stay on the tracks, on the rails. And if it derails and goes off the tracks, then it's going not in the direction of the plan and it could be catastrophic with some loss of life. <clears throat> Over 220,000 Americans. That being said, let's move on. As I said up above, we have Disclose again. And this Supreme Court nominee here failed to disclose. What did she fail to disclose? Talks on Roe v. Wade. Those are discussions about Roe v. Wade is the court case that set the precedent for um, the right to choose, a.k.a. abortion in the United States. So... Um, she failed to disclose her talks about this um, landmark court case. And those talks were hosted by an anti-abortion group. And who did she forget to disclose them to? To the Senate, in her Senate paperwork. So to the Senate Approvals Committee. And so it's kind of a strange little thing. I had to read through this headline twice to figure out exactly who, what, where, when, and why. So she failed to disclose the talks which were hosted by an anti-abortion group, and she failed to disclose them to the Senate committee or on her paperwork. Whew. Ah. And so, yes, she did not give the information to them. She preferred to keep it under the table, under wraps, keep the cat in the bag, not spill the beans, not let them know, because she thought that, I guess, maybe her opinions about this might sway their opinion about her approval. Um, however, when you're going to be appointed to one of the highest legal positions in the land, you need to make the appropriate disclosures, which are basically required by law. To my understanding, I'm not a legal expert, believe it or not. There we go. Those were the headlines for this morning. For English Otherwise, that was breaking down the news today, Monday the 12th of May. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what we do, please don't forget to click the like, follow, subscribe, bell icon, etc. I'll be on tonight, 8 p.m. to do a crossword. We'll be crossing words and crossing swords and helping you pick up some more of that interesting vocabulary and a few pieces of trivia to put in your pocket and pull out at cocktail parties and share with people so that way you look smart. That's it. Thank you very much for tuning in and I hope you have a great start to your day if you're not, if not your week. And uh, if I don't see you sooner, I'll see you later. Alrighty. Have a beautiful day. Stop the stream. Bye-bye. Yes. Come on. Stop the stream.